Hello, everybody. Good morning. We're just waiting for all the participants to arrive here and then we can get started. I can just share my screen. So on behalf of Maria01, I welcome you to the morning webinar about why should you care about startup cybersecurity. My name is Tia Toivola and I'll be hosting this webinar with the speakers from Accenture, Autos and Inventure. Once again, welcome this morning. Just a couple of rules to start with. So try to keep your webcam on if it's possible. We want this event to be interactive and uh, keep your microphones muted so uh, we don't get any, any bloopers on the background. But I'm sure everybody knows this drill already. And if you have any questions to the speakers or want to comment or whatnot, uh, please ask them in, in the chat or, or the Q&A uh, section so we can then address them accordingly. So basically today we aim to spread the awareness of the importance of cybersecurity to the Nordic startups and what it means in general. So let's talk about cybersecurity. Today I have three speakers as mentioned. So shortly Nico Mariama from Accenture will take the stage and and kind of set the scene to, to uh, let us know what startups should actually know about cybersecurity. After Nico, we have Severi Haverila from Aatos telling their case, company case, and how their company went in practice with uh, security matters while building their company. And then finally, we have Timo Tirkkonen from InVenture to tell a bit more about the investing side and how does security matters relate to investments. And uh, we will uh, end the session around 10. So uh, let's get on with it. Uh, Nico, go ahead and share your screen. Great. First of all, thank you for my behalf as well uh, to all the other speakers, to Maria01, as well as the part participants of today here who are here to hear more about the exciting topic of cybersecurity. So my, my name is Nico Marima and I work for Accenture Securities uh, Strategy and Risk Practice here in Finland. I work uh, across the globe and very closely with the Nordic partners as well. And in my role, I have been uh, working very closely lately with the organization's top level leadership board of directors in their security poster, security transformations and M&A type of situations and valuations of specific deals. But without further ado, uh, I'll start by setting the scene from four common myths, myths point, point of view regarding cybersecurity that still seem to surround the environment, regardless if we are talking about a bigger, bigger organization or a startup or a growth organization. Um, <clears throat> most common theme is that cybersecurity is just an IT topic or something additional to the common IT field. As a matter of fact, nowadays, uh, cybersecurity surrounds everything that the organization does, um, no matter if it's uh, HR practices, legal point of view, and so on. So cybersecurity is involved in all of those in one way or another. The second one that seems to be very common, which comes from the old good days of how IT security was viewed was that the, uh, when you do an audit or implement certain capabilities, that should be enough. However, that is no longer uh, feasible. Uh, it's not cost effective. And so a good cybersecurity poster for the organization cannot be gained through just doing an audit at the end or trying to glue capabilities on top of the operations. Cybersecurity is not cheap, but at the same time, it is not just a cost factor for the organizations anymore. 
uh, and good poster can actually increase the value of the organization, maybe from the monetary perspective or from the perspective of customer satisfaction, for example, or uh, regulatory compliance that some organizations fa face due to their uh, field of operation. And lastly, uh, the modern chief, inf chief information security officer or similar person who's responsible for security of the organization uh, should be the most technical, technical, um, technically aware of the security topics. While that might have been um, the situation in the past, nowadays organizations are starting to see the value of a modern CISO or security responsible who's able to talk about business IT and security in the same topic and provide value from security itself. But from the myths, uh, we can jump to the point that cybersecurity is still really nothing new. It just has changed a lot over the past few years. From our latest threat report of 2020, we identified five major topics uh, in, in, involving how organizations are seeing this change in their operations. So the new normal and working conditions have of course, increase the emphasis of good cybersecurity poster, but also they are seeing new type of threats facing the organization when people are working remotely and working from different locations using systems or uh, environments that are probably not as protected as their own office environments. New type of attacks are also coming up um, from different directions and there is lots of emphasis on cloud um, type of cloud facing attacks. So organizations are pushing their services towards other directions and criminals and other entities are also targeting their attacks towards those. Also, what I would say is the most evolving part and what we have seen lately is the multi-layered attacks masking real activity. So organizations might face attacks like uh, denial of services uh, that are very visible and open to everybody and everybody can see the result. However, the real activity ha happens beneath the surface. Increase in ran ransomware is also something we are seeing uh, when it comes to media coverage of cybersecurity, how organizations are facing things, uh, what has been reported to the different type of law enforcement as well. So ransomware is it's not just something that organizations are facing from the bigger scale or when you're a bigger organization, but it also, also startups are facing the same situation. And connected world and networks increase our overall threat landscape. So what we talk about is supply chain uh, threats. So that might be uh, your service provider uh, who was facing the attack that affects you, but also when organizations are using, let's say open source components in their uh, tools and capabilities. So if those organizations who are developing the uh, specific components are facing the target, the effects will be faced down the line in other organizations as well. Well, majority of the cases are, uh, or what, the, what we have been facing in the media and through security organizations as well are facing a bigger organization. So the one of the questions uh, we've been asking are startups in a better situation then? And the simple answer is no. Uh, and the challenges might be in some cases more complex due to the size, resources and so on. So when, when you are growing, you have a limited number of personnel, resources, and know-how in some cases in the organization. So you need, really need to prioritize, allocate, and educate your staff and people on how to ensure that security is taken care of in, in all of the aspects of the organization. One thing from the technical perspective, what we have seen is the over-reliance on these superstar developers who are very skilled and aware of their topics. And Typically on these situations, I also raise my hand and say, just because you are the most skilled developer doesn't mean that you are a cybersecurity expert, because the field itself is very expanding, covers multiple different areas. And even when you're a security professional, you cannot be an expert in all of the different areas. So trying to push that responsibility on single developers or multiple superstar developers will be a challenge and might be a challenge. And as an example, what I see often in attack simulations and when I'm supporting organizations that my number one source for trying to get organizational information and what they're doing on the background is not trying to attack the organization itself, 
but looking for information openly available in sources like GitHub and so on, where skilled developers are unknowingly making information public. So it, it's an area you need to really, really need to look into and start building the culture behind how to properly secure your information when you're developing and so on. Um, also, what we are seeing in bigger organizations, and I would say in the in the growth organizations as well, is that R and D and corporate espionage espionage is increasing. And to simply summarize that, if you are proud of, proud of something and you see value in what you are doing, there is somebody else who might be interested in in it as well, but from a different perspective. So what what they try to do is try to steal the information, start, uh, try to get into the organization's networks to try to understand what this organization is doing. And is this something that somebody else could replicate? So corporate espionage and R&D espionage is common for any type of organization, regardless of your size or sp spread. But why does this all matter then? And I think this is one of the bigger things of, the, of my point of view today is that uh, your customers expect more from you. Um, whether these are business customers or uh, your typical consumer customers, these are they are becoming more aware and they are expecting you to keep their data safe. They are expecting availability of these services and they are they are trusting you to do your part when it comes to this. Also, many organizations operate in fields such as finance or health sector where there are different types of compliance requirements that you need to consider. So it's not just that you need to do things for your customers, but regulators and other organizations are also expecting, expecting these things from you. Um, GDPR and those type of uh, regulations also affect all of the organizations. So it is something you need to consider there. Um, as mentioned, if you're developing something new, there is probably somebody who is interested in, in it that, that well. So you need to protect your assets when you are developing new things or coming up with the latest and greatest solution for the market. Uh, so you don't do the research for years in some cases and then lose it in a matter of minutes uh, due to espionage or cyber attack. Um, investors are becoming more aware of um, and conscious about the cybersecurity and they're asking more questions. As an example, Accenture does billions of dollars of investor or has done billions of dollars of investment over the past few years. And from the due diligence perspective, we do look at things, cybersecurity from a di differently than before. And what that means that is that organizations need to be able to present how they are covering cybersecurity topics, how they have built it in the culture and so on. This doesn't mean that if there are gaps in your cybersecurity that the investors and other organizations will be saying no to you, but it might affect your valuation and what you need to do to improve your poster uh, differently than if, if it has been in, in, uh, embedded in your practices. Um, in some cases, what we have seen is that exit and M&A opportunities decrease. So when cybersecurity poster is not something that has been taken care of, it uh, does decrease the value or expected value of the deal or the organization. And while saying that it, in many cases, it doesn't re lead to organizations saying no to you, it might come to that state that they are not as willing to support you on this journey anymore. And one thing I want to highlight is that in the end, it is the leadership of the organization who will be responsible for it. So no matter how much you emphasize that the, the security person will be responsible for embedding capabilities and uh, ensuring our networks are secure, our information is protected, the leadership will be in the end, the one who will be facing the questions if something happens. So that's why it is a leadership topic as well. And you need to be able to ask the right questions. What are we doing on this? How are we doing things? And what can we do more? Great. The world is not so black and, well, black and white in all the situations. And there are good things you can do when it comes to this, but it starts from the very top. So have a committed leadership who was willing to ask the hard questions. Are we doing enough? Should we be doing more? How can we do more? Build strong culture around cybersecurity and 
talk about it in your organization. And um, I, I think that um, on the later presentations today, you will be hearing about how this culture can be built into your organization. So I'm not going to talk about too much about that because that story might be very interesting to you as well. I understand that cybersecurity is more than technology. It is partially involved in all activities and this is something that even bigger organizations are facing today that we are discussing that even when it comes to HR, there are cyber security, security or security related practices and activities you need to take care of. Cyber security is not easy. It is complex. There are expectations and requirements and responsibilities coming from different directions. So understand those and ask for right things and uh, ask yourself, do we understand and really embed our, you know, into our practices what is expected from us. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to start try to build things from scratch yourself, seek for partners and outsource at, as much as possible if cybersecurity is not your core business. It will be more cost effective down the line while the, in the beginning it might seem like it is uh, a cost factor. One thing I want to emphasize as the last point here, one of the last points here is to ask your investors, advisors, and the great community around you for help and insight. You are not the first organization to struggle with the big questions and asking for help is not a sign of uh, weakness, but in my eyes, it, it is one of the signs of greatness of the organization that they're willing to admit that they want to do more, but there's the lack of know-how of how Embed security, and this is really strongly co connected to culture itself. Embed security in your operations development and testing practices from day zero. The earlier cyber security is include, um, included in the development and idea creation practices, cheaper it will be for your organization down the line. And as a last point, which I want to emphasize for any type of organization is educate, educate, educate your people. It, it, it all starts from this open discussion in your organization of what are the potential threats and risks? What are we doing? And how as a company and as an organization, we can do more. Thank you very much from my point of view. This was my last slide and I'm opening the door for questions, hopefully. And hopefully we have very good questions coming up. Great. Thank you a lot, Nico. I'd like to give you a virtual clap and hopefully all of the audience is also clapping. I have a few questions over here. So the first one is uh, related to building cultural culture and organizations. So what do you think are the top three things every single leader uh, should take into account in terms of cybersecurity? How would you summarize the themes? Uh, that's a very, very good question. Uh, and one, one thing to start with, uh, understand that when it, when it comes to leadership expectations, nobody is still expecting you to be a cybersecurity expert. So that, that I want to make that very clear as the rule number one. Understand threats and risks that, uh, that might be facing your, you might face as an organization. But don't expect that this means that you should become the cybersecurity expert itself. Uh, point number two is that uh, have, as mentioned here as well, is to have these open discussions in your organization and be willing to listen to outside view as well when it comes to potential threats and risks for your organization. And really try to get into the, what might be the root causes or what might lead to these situations that we might face due to activities X, Y, and Z. So, Think about, it, think about it from the view of why would somebody be interested in my organization and what would they try to do against us and then try to cover against those. Uh, and the last part is also, uh, as mentioned, um, I'm not a big fan of compliance and regulation when it comes to these topics, but it's, it is a mandatory thing organizations need to consider. So understand what are the specific requirements for your organization uh, for, or for your industry itself and take those into account in everything you do, that you cover your bases and you do the minimum required by those and the, what is expected by your customers. And also ask for, your, you know, ask for support from your uh, surroundings when it comes to these things. Great, that's, that's a very good summary. Um, another question, 
uh, a viewer wants to uh, talk about money. So <laughs> how, how to argue for a larger cybersecurity budget? That's, uh, that, that is one of the most complex topics in my eyes due to the fact that there are really no good formulas for calculating what should be the value or how much money should be spent on cybersecurity. Uh, there are historically, historically uh, rosy uh, calculations and so on, but they are very speculative when it comes to the, okay, how much money per operation should we invest on cybersecurity. My rule of thumb has been for years is that a, we can use what uh, some research houses have been proposing that it's X percent of all IT budget. Uh, however, the problem with that is that since cybersecurity is involved in all of the activities, does it make sense that you're only focusing on the, on the overall IT budget and percentile of that dedicated to uh, cybersecurity? The short answer is uh, it depends from organization to organization and what you do. How visible are your services towards the outside world? Uh, what are your customer expectations? Uh, and also how, do, how are you planning to expand your operations? So general rule of thumb is around 10% of your overall operating budget, but that might be very high for some organizations. So it has to be case by case. I know that's a really open-ended answer, and the, the fact is there is really no good way to calculate it. I mean, it depends or, from organization to organization. Good. I guess the 10% could be taken in as a uh, kind of rule of thumb to, to start with something. So earlier I asked about the what should every leader uh, take into account in terms of cybersecurity. But what is your view to uh, what should every employee take into account? So kind of taking the, the two sides there. I, I hate to be the person to say uh, that I understand your organizational policies and what is allowed and what is not. But I, I, I still have to say that that is one thing that uh, uh, is often lacking in organizations that you have very good policies in place of uh, what you can do and what you cannot do with the uh, organization's machines and how data should be used and so on. Uh, but communication of those. So as an, as an employee, what I do myself is I try to understand what are the expectations for me, ask for those from my leadership and so on as well. Um, the second part is when it comes to these uh, general rule of thumbs of things and the, I understand the world of uh, working from anywhere uh, and uh, being very open to work in coffee, coffees and coffees and so on. But uh, it's a very small thing, but protect your screen. <laughs> uh, too often what I've seen on airplanes and so on, the uh, people working on their presentations and it's not necessarily necessarily information that belongs to me. From the technical point of view, what I would say is one of the things is to protect your information when it comes to development cycle and DevOps practices. So what mentioned there as well as the GitHub and other sources, repositories and so on, do not use personal ones. Try to build a centralized corporate one that you use rather than individual personal repositories where you do some tweaking and um, testing and so on. Uh, it, it's just good hygiene for the organization to keep data in organization's repository rather than individual itself, as an example. Good, great. Thanks, thanks for the answer. And now I guess Severi is already almost up and running with his presentation. So hmm. uh, thanks a lot, Nico. Uh, I think we, we will next welcome our next speaker from Aatos. Go ahead, Severi, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Severi, and I'm a co-founder at Atos. And I'm going to give a startup's perspective to these topics of cybersecurity. But before jumping into that, I'll talk short, shortly about Atos to kind of give you an understanding what we do and why cybersecurity is important to us. So, so at Atos, we take care of the things things you should. Do. So, what this basically means is that you can you can solve any kind of legal matters online using our services. In practice, this could be anything, anything from a, a legal document such as a, a prenup or a last will to also other processes such as an estate inventory, for example, which is Peronkirjoitus in Finnish. 
And to support our services, we have also created our own e-signing platform called AutoSign, so that all of this can be done completely online, if just possible from a legal perspective. Uh, some statistics, uh, maybe the most interesting one is the age distribution of, of our users. So we, I, I would argue that the technical know-how of, of our users varies, varies a lot, which also we have to take into account when, when doing these services and, and when we think about cybersecurity of our, of, of our customers. So that's, that's an interesting, interesting thing we, we, we work with every day when, when building our, our services. So on to the actual, actual topic, uh, the cybersecurity in, in a startup. And I have divided this in, into a couple of points that, that have come up during our everyday work. And the first one is, is probably also the most obvious one. So the technical aspect of cybersecurity, obviously there's tech involved and I, I'm a technical co-founder myself. So my normal work days are usually related to coding. So when you're coding your product, you should do this kind of security driven development. And what, what I mean with this is that you should active, actively think about potential threats that, that, you might, that might, might be caused by the code you're producing and, and try to mitigate the threats already when, when, you, when you're creating the software. So it has to be kind of all the time at the back of your head, like, okay, if somebody would try to hack into the system, like how, what would they try to do? So it's, it's what the first thing I, I do every time I do dev development that I think about these issues and try to try to mitigate the threat already already when when implementing the software. But it's it's not just your code that has to be secure. It's also all the dependencies that you rely on. And for example, a simple web page nowadays it has probably I don't know a thousand different dependencies. So you should probably like make your research and 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 only use dependencies that you first trust, but also keep your dependencies updated so that in case any vulnerabilities are introduced into the, those dependencies, you, you get the fixes included in your software as soon as possible. The third thing is that you should probably know what's happening in your system. So if something is going on, somebody is trying to hack into the system, like you should be alerted and there's no other way around this except that you you monitor what's what's happening in your system and and, and that you know if, if something unusual happens that you can at least take a look yourself and 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 react if, if needed so that's a third important technical aspect uh, the second point i'd like to highlight is optimizing your resources because i mean startups usually don't have enough resources and you have to be really careful where, where, you, where you put your time on. So use the cloud or any kind of third party offerings if you just can't, don't try to reinvent the wheel and, and build everything from scratch. Uh, the big cloud providers nowadays, they have a wide variety of different services that you can basically build your product on top of completely. And it's, it's not just easier and more cost efficient to do this, it's, it's also, I would argue it's more, more, much more secure to do this. Do it, do it this way, because let's say Amazon. Ha, I'm, I'm sure they have much more resources that they can put into securing their services than we would ever have, or basically any company in Finland would ever ever have. So I'm, I'm actually really glad that I can, I can trust that. Okay, the services I'm using are, are secure, and, and, and security is ensured by, 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 the, by, the, by the big companies with, with larger resources. So I or our company, Atos, can focus on making our software secure that we build on top of, the, on top of these services. So be efficient when it comes to your resources. Uh, the third thing is you should do the obvious. Like you should have strong passwords. You should encrypt your hard drives. You should have two-factor authentications, VPNs, whatever. But then again, it's not necessarily obvious to everybody, especially when your team grows. So you should make it obvious. Whenever somebody starts at your company, it should be easy to kind of comply with the security standards that you, your company enforces. And also when, when you document these things, it's, it's also easier to go through them and, and kind of 
actively think like, have we missed something? Is, is there something missing? Is there something we should maybe take care of? And security is only as strong as the weakest link. It's, it's kind of a cliche, but it's, it's, it's still a pretty valid point. Then about the data and, and where does your data live? Obviously this is important, for example, due to the GDPR reasons, but also there's some security aspect as well. Like if you spread your customer data around in 20 different services around the globe, like there's so much more that can go wrong. Like only one of these services has to get compromised in order for you to be, be hacked. So be conservative when it comes to data and when it, when it comes to like storing your data somewhere. It's also about, about the looks. So it's not enough for a startup just to be secure. You also, you also have to show it to your customers and they, they have to trust you. And this is something when I talked about, for example, like the age of our, our, our users, which, which varies a lot. So we have seen that, that elderly people, they might be really skeptical when it comes to digital services. And we might be the first digital service that they're actually use, have used to buy, or, or we might be the first place they have bought something online. So it is really important us that we can show our customers that we can be trusted, that we are secure. Of course, the basis has to be there. Like we actually have to be like the security has to be there, but we also have to show it to the end users as well. And the sixth point I'd like to make is make the security seamless. So usability and security don't always go hand in hand. I mean, a really good example is the starting of this presentation. Like I had to quit Zoom in order to share my screen and, and, and put some security toggle on that I, I, I allow Zoom to access my screen. So I think this is a great example of kind of a bad user experience, like where security has, has made the user experience bad from, my, from, from the user's perspective. So, but for, for a startup, there's like, if your software is not secure, you, you won't have a company, but also if your software is not usable, you won't have a company because you won't have any customers. You, nobody is, wants to use your service. So it's, it's really important that you both make your software secure, but don't compromise on, on the usability either. I'm sure it is possible to make usable services that are secure, but it, it might, be, might be difficult, but, but it, it is possible. And sometimes you, you might be required to kind of prove that you are secure, that the, your company is secure, that the product you're offering is secure. Especially like once you start doing, doing any kind of business with, with bigger companies, they might require you to, to, I don't know, they might ask for a security audit or they might ask you like whether you have some sort of a certification for your software or anything like that. So be prepared for that as well as soon as you start talking to any bigger businesses. It's not just about cybersecurity. There are other aspects as well. Think about the physical security. For, for example, we at Ados, we have, have an actual safe in our office. We have a, a shredder in our office. So whenever we have any kind of confidential papers, we don't just put them on the tables and, and leave them there. We, we put it in the safe. And when we want to get rid of those papers, we don't throw it into the trash. We use the shredder, these kind of things. So it's not just about the cyber security. It's like there are other aspects to it as well. Then about the culture, uh, you should build a security conscious culture and kind of make it a natural part of your everyday life in, in your company. And, and this, this is something that should be done already from the, from the start. Like it doesn't, ha security isn't something that you glue on top of your company or on top of your product once some, some big, big company wants you to show that you're secure. They want to do a security or audit. That's, that's way too late. Like you, you have to think about these issues as soon as you start. And it's, it's gonna be much easier that way as well. And if you ask me, that's the only way to do these things. I'd like to end with a, a statement that every company is an information company. I mean, for, 
us it's obvious but i'd, I'd say it's, it should be obvious to everybody everybody is everybody has some kind of user information that they have to secure so and and they have to care about information security thank you very much any questions great thanks a lot for the for the presentation severi really good tips on every company to take into account just follow the 10 steps that you you mentioned uh, I have a question here. Uh, so, um, as you mentioned, the, the steps, the 10 mm -hmm. different themes there, how would you then build a cybersecurity strategy for a small startups? I, I think it has to do with like starting, starting early on, as, as, as I mentioned. And I, I think like the cybersecurity strategy, it, it is something that kind of evolves with the company. And it's it's probably not nothing complex like in initially like it, it might be that okay have these kind of two factor authentications in 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 place and 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 think about the coding practices, but I it, in my opinion it, it is something that evolves with the company and and it, it, when the company grows it it might get more complex and, and more documented but but I think the most important thing is that it, you have to have to talk about it already when when you start. And, and, and kind of adapt it to your company situations when, when, when the situation changes. That's true. Just start early with, with yes. the company as yes. a whole and then uh, implement the cybersecurity practices. And kind of iter iterate it on, on, on top of it. It's, it's much easier when you, when you start with something and, and, and continuously improve prove it instead of like trying to do it at all at once. Exactly, yeah. Baby steps, so to say. Um, let's say a company has a cybersecurity strategy or so, but how to make it then visible that your company is uh, secure? I have one uh, listener here asked about the ISO uh, 27001 standard. What is, could that be something to um, take into account to really show that your company is secure? I think it really depends, like, what do you do like if you're if you're selling to like be like, like if you have a, some if you're selling a product to bigger bigger companies it might be about these certifications it might be about security audits uh, but in my opinion like we're, we're doing we're, we're selling our services to, to to customers and they don't necessarily understand about these things they don't know anything about ESO something or or, or whatever so when you're when you're creating a product for, for customers or like actual individuals, you should, it, it's about the kind of the looks and feels like, does it feel secure? It, it, it's kind of difficult to put into the words, but you have to get this kind of a safe feeling like this is a, this is a place that I can trust. And this is a service that I can trust. Then again, I, I truly believe that doing, for example, a, a security audit is worth it at some point for a startup, even though your customers wouldn't require you to do it, but it, it's still something like just for yourself, like to have somebody who's not part of your company to kind of go through your software and, and, and think about these aspects as well. So I think that's that might be important, even though you wouldn't, I mean, you, it's then it's up to you if you want to communicate it to your customers that, okay, we have done this audit, but I mean, it, it, it really depends like what, what you do. That's true. Kind of having the balance on getting the internal security practices in place and then uh, to what extent show that outside the company. Yes. And I, I think like it's also important that you trust what like you, you, you believe what you're, you're saying, like like not that you, I, I don't think you can fake it for quite for a long time that, oh, yes, we are secure. Yes, we are secure. Even if in the end, like everything is unsecure like beneath. It's much easier like if you're actually like thinking about these things every day and then putting it uh, into words like when you're talking with your customers than, than trying to fake it. So if, if, you, if you want to be secure, be secure and, and try to show it as well. Exactly, it's much more easier to sell something that you actually trust yourself and, and yes. Yes. fake it till you make it. It doesn't work. Yes. Um, you mentioned about the, the customer experience having its effects uh, with like uh, cybersecurity. 
So do you think that cybersecurity experts or even the company leaders should be knowledgeable on the customer experience and, and what type of uh, security influence can there be? Mm, I think it probably depends on, on the size of the company. I'm, for us, we are, we are five, five people, so everybody should care about these, these things. Uh, I don't know, like, like it's kind of a difficult question to answer, but, but for, for us, it's, it's kind of a, a no-brainer that we have to have a usable ser service, but we cannot compromise on security either. And we have gone through a lot of discussions within our company, like when we're building our products, like how do we do a, a user, like how, how do we do the user flow in a way that it's, it's easy, for the end user, but still it's it's secure. Like we, we can't compromise on that either. And we, we've spent so many hours like thinking about these issues. So it, it's it's not easy, but for us, we have basically involved the whole company when, when talking about these issues. But probably if, if you have a, a larger company, it might not be everybody who, who who's, who's involved. That's true. And of course, for, for any company customer is the, is the primary, um, stakeholder to take into account. Um, yes. You talked about the hours and hours you put into building your company. So what were the biggest obstacles when getting started with the, with the security matters? I think the biggest obstacles were the, like it was the usability, like, it, like how do we, May, I, I always come back to this, but this has, has been like a big topic for, for us. Like how, how, how do we make, make the cost, customer not drop during, during the purchase flow or when they come to our product? Because we ask, ask for two, two difficult questions, like, I don't know, confirming their emails or, or, or setting up passwords or, or, or whatever. So I think the most difficult part has been like, how, how do we make this usable? How do we make it easy and nice to use? A kind of boring answer because I always come back to this usability, but but it has been a big, big part of of, of our company. Sometimes the the most obvious answers are the best ones, perhaps. Yeah. Um, I I'd like to thank you, uh, Severi, for for your speech. Thank and you very much. Hopefully, the audience got uh, good tips on where to start with building the security matters for their startups. So now it is time for our last speaker, Timo Tirkkonen, to take the stage. So go ahead, Timo. Yes, hello from my part. So uh, I have the pleasure to talk then about how this is uh, see the thing and and uh, uh, but first a short uh, short recap and introduction to inventure so so a nordic vc based here in finland uh, as hq but uh, we also have what this in stockholm and we have uh, invested uh, uh, in over 60 companies already and and uh, and also one one cyber security detectify where where i actually have learned learned a lot and 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 uh, every time I speak to the guys, it scares me more because, uh, in my view, actually the the whole cybersecurity or the threats has has kind of in, evolved in ten years from from being more hobbyist, idealist uh, doing things, and now it's actually a huge business, probably one of the biggest kind of a non-listed business uh, in in uh, kind of a fraud and uh, and uh, uh, ransomware. But uh, we'll speak a little bit about that more. Uh, we are a team of, of 14 and uh, uh, quite, quite diverse team. Uh, we are uh, always been that and, and always want to have uh, uh, both from nationalities and gender point of view, a very diverse team. But uh, you can look more about us on the, on the web page. But then, then the kind of the question was that our VC is conducting due diligence on cybersecurity, and 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 it, it actually, I actually have to think about it a lot, and 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 gonna have a very, very political answer to that one, which is uh, 
yes and no. And, and uh, much why, why I'm thinking that way is that, that yes, we are doing due diligence, uh, but do we do very kind of an, an audit uh, and go to the niche, niche details? In many cases, not, since, since we are also doing a lot of seed and all our initial investments are from uh, seed and or a round and and seed i mean for example a little what severi said i think your first one was probably a very small mvp what you have been pitching to investors volt is a good example when we invested when they were the, just the founders they have the mock up on their on their mobile phone so there's not much to do kind of cybersecurity audit on the most seed seed things but when we do uh so so i have divided how we look at it in two kind of and and folded how how we in in inventure tackle uh cyber security dd is from the kind of product and storage and there we usually if we do do that one we we take an external uh, uh many times it's it's an an expert who look very much on the on the technical stack and and also uh, then evaluates the security stack so to speak and the security aspects on on those ones uh, these are always on on a round cases and uh, who do b2b software and 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 it will be integrated to the customer's uh, uh, own own software stack somehow uh, and because then then we need to know that that uh, i mean do they meet all the requirements and 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 uh, to, to be big and and uh, but uh, that's kind of on the product storage side uh, and then uh, where we do quite a lot more is 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 kind of on the what i would say the internal on on the tools and processes which which uh, uh, are used in the everyday life and and it goes um, i think the awareness one of the few good things in my view what came from the gdpr hassle uh, two years ago or three years ago I, I think it built the awareness on all companies on really looking that where is your your data stored and how is it stored uh, and 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 i think many people realized how scattered it is and and, and you didn't have so much clue where it was but then we look also on on, on the access management, uh, what kind of security tools are in place, uh, processes, is there a dedicated person responsible for it, and what kind of onboarding education uh, things you have. Uh, I've, and to be very frank, when you are a seed and even a round, many of these uh, are, of course, not in very much in place but and, and these kind of and the, this due diligence goes pretty much uh, through questionnaires and interviews so so not much kind of having an, an third party doing an audit and and and, uh, and looking very very uh, uh, thoroughly on these things and I think as, as mentioned by the previous speaker very we good that that yes and and to do an audit yes it's good but it's more about what you do after the audit and how you continuously do do that thing. But what does actually due diligence mean in 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 it? Because I mean, when we invest, we conduct all kinds of due diligence. It's legal, it's finance, it's technical, it's it's uh, and in technical it included security due diligence. And and uh, I, I think too many startups are a little bit. Gets a little bit on defense when when do 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 due diligence, but uh, I mean this is just to to have an an and cut through and an and an audit before we come because then we start working on the key findings uh, there and, and then I must say that I think never have we passed an an case who who has gotten kind of not so good scored on the security DD because it's it's uh, everything there I mean it's more uh kind of fixable e in a way uh so what's the outcome of the the dd so so of course we get a lot of findings there uh by ourselves and the, and the third parties and and the, of course the biggest is that are there red flags and 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 then it might be a, a deal uh, breaker 
but but we we are very open with our DD findings. Is it legal, uh, technical uh, on the on the on the security? Or the finance that we actually share all reports with the the the, the startups because I mean I mean that's the uh, most uh, key is that uh, you will find uh, uh, hopefully only uh, yellow flags. Uh, of course, always comes up some red flags, but to ninety five percent they are always fixable and 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 uh, and uh, then will come. Uh, in suggestions of improvement and action plans, and uh, and uh, all those will be implemented in a shareholders agreement, which I think many are familiar with. Where are the biggest negotiations and dispute, maybe, and and uh, uh, all these are of course then implemented also to the representations and warrants, and there you agree on the liabilities. And the inventification, and and I, I think that uh, everybody has probably followed in the press the Vastamo. So this is kind of the the process what is going on there, and 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 because because always think very carefully when you answer the questions. Uh, it's much better, as uh, said here, or also that always be honest and truthful, and 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 because. Uh, if you also don't disclose everything in the due diligence, it will pop up. And I think Vastamo is a very severe case of uh, what happens when you, well, I can't comment everything, but uh, since I don't know everything, but what has been in the press and now in the, in the, in, 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 in the courts, uh, now it's, it's, it's word against word. And, and, and those always are very tough to do with. But if, if you disclose everything and are, open, you will never have any problems with due diligence or shareholders agreements. So, so this is kind of why investors do due diligence. And, and, and of, of course, the due diligence on the cybersecurity, the, the bigger the rounds are, or you go to MTA, they will be much more uh, deeper than maybe from an investor like we are. But of course, we have also started to, to evolve on this one. I mean, uh, InVenture started 2005. And I think that the, the questionnaires on the cybersecurity are getting uh, more extensive and, and, uh, uh, and putting more effort on that one, because I, I think uh, everybody has seen what has happened there and, and even in our portfolio companies and in the VC private equity community, there has happened a lot of uh, frauds, uh, uh, I will come back to, to what kind of frauds uh, those are, why I think the private equity community, VC and startups are taking uh, this much more seriously. So, so but what is our, our role in the cyber security? Because uh, how, how we at least in InVenture work, uh, uh, so uh, from the Kind of the, the due diligence findings, you you start to see at what kind of a level and what ambition level and what kind of a culture the 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 company has, and 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 it's really as um, I think there was a question also that 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 how how do you kind of get the culture and and who takes the lead and I think everything which is kind of top priorities uh, I mean it always has to start from the top I mean it's it's really from the board going to the CEO and, and from there uh, down. So, so uh, we really uh, encourage and, and, and really support uh, to get uh, processes, tools, culture, and the very most important is to have it on the top of uh, your mind uh, in the startup uh, world. And, and, and the, the sooner you start it, the better it is, because uh, the whole uh, kind of top of mind and culture starts also when you start uh, developing your product, uh, because you you have to really take it into account in your in your R and D. Because if you don't take it from the start, it's very hard to implement things uh, when you you kind of have a live product or a platform, uh, uh, because. Uh, you, you will miss things if you don't have it in the whole R&D process. Always when, when it goes from stages to test stages in your R&D, always uh, uh, do 
do checks, uh, audits, uh, tests, etc. Et and also continue it when you are live with, with your product, continuously monitor and, and, uh, and do, do test on, on it. And, and what we really, really also uh, uh, do a lot is uh, uh, really support the education. There are very many good uh, also startups who are, are doing uh, gamified uh, education like Hox Hunt in, 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 in Finland, uh, because also in the start, usually uh, startups are quite tech uh, heavy, tech savvy. But when you start to grow to 20 person, 50 person, hundred per person, you will get more and more, maybe not so technical uh, persons involved in the company. So, so you really need to kind of educate everybody uh, because in, in our experience also of the kind of breaches or incidents, what has happened in our startup portfolio has always been uh, for most part uh, human errors and 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 those uh, you just can't uh, i mean you can only tackle that one to educate educate and then we also uh, uh, we have a lot of kind of an small group seminars what what we uh, in adventure uh, organize and 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 many times it also has been led by somebody from detectify who who are explaining also uh, the very good kind of and 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 uh, quick fixes and long fixes on on how to improve your uh, cybersecurity in inside the company and and uh, of course since we have over 60 portfolio companies we can also provide very good uh, benchmarks on what kind of a tools people are are uh, using uh, uh, how to work uh, if you have it on on the cloud what to which tools to take there? What's the difference between having it in in in, in Google, Amazon, etc. Et, et so 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 uh, really much with the education seminar and providing benchmark da data wants to help our our uh, portfolio companies uh, on the cyber security. Uh, then this is my kind of a, um, and a little bit. Uh, 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 my experience and our learnings and 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 kind of small advices uh, i must say that it's, it's not very nice always to be the last speaker since i think nico and severi <laughs> kind of kind of said everything already but uh, this might be quite uh, a reputation but i'm i'm, I'm quite uh, quite happy about that one that we we have kind of three different stakeholders here we we have uh, from from kind of the expert in nico from the the, the startup in Severi, and then me from 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 the kind of VC community, and we seem to be very al aligned on on, the, on these kind of a things, which has to be in in place. But here is just to show also how complex it, it is nowadays, because your your online presence are a little bit all over the place, and and this I I think is is is, is one of the one of the uh, uh, big uh, uh, kind of challenges is that that uh, i think both to took it up that that uh, the, the bigger your organization also goes people are to start having your personal tools but using them also for for the company per purpose so it's very hard to also track where your assets are and and and, and this is actually a right racing trend is 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 asset inventory and asset monitoring Monitoring what uh, really is the big demand in in the uh, enterprise uh, uh, world. Uh, for example, one one biggest customer which uh, uh, Detectify has has uh, was it 112,000 nodes or IP addresses all over the world, and and to monitor those, it's 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 not very uh, very. Uh, it's it is a challenging task so 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 really really be disciplined or also where you have your 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 uh, 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 your assets but on the kind of product on storage again where i have i mean came here many times i mean i mean use cloud uh, uh, of course some some businesses we have three three uh, companies who are doing on-prem and and on-prem products uh, uh, but then always if you are in cloud use those security tools and 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 the gadgets they provide there and 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 don't uh, 
don't uh, don't save money on on those. Of course, you have to pay extra uh, for those, but it will always pay off. And always use existing security models and and tools. Don't uh, yeah, I have it there. That don't reinvent the the wheel. Uh, uh, of, of course, many are. Uh, I think their VCs maybe can, can a little bit uh, also always think because I, I, I think uh, many VCs also uh, ask that what kind of an IP do you have and, and 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 that's one reason I think why many startups try to kind of broaden their own IP portfolio by reinventing the wheel, which yes it's good but it also creates problem from the security side uh, how I see it and and really implement the security into your R&D process from day one and, 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 and continuously uh, do testing, monitor, and, 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 and also when you're live, monitor your product for vulnerabilities, because uh, I think that's one lesson I learned that although, although in R&D phases and when you go live, your platform product, everything is green, but then the more complex and, and more open source uh, 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 stacks you have there I mean they get updated all, all the time and 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 everything can be secured as as one kind of bracket but when they all work together there will be kind of gaps and vulnerabilities so that's why you always need to monitor your 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 production ver version uh, uh, because I mean you you just don't know what kind of an updates comes and how that kind of an uh, it jeopardizes uh, your own configurations there. So it's very important to, to, to constantly monitor and test. And then the in encryption. I, I think uh, Vastamo, if they would have encrypted the thing, uh, they would be in a total different uh, 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 place uh, there. And uh, then again on the on the internal tools or processes, I think everything was was kind of said. Uh, 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 the one I really want to maybe uh, add there is really the asset inventory, which kind of is part of the GDPR, uh, of of course. But the 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 more people you are in the organization, the more scattered you will have, and and, and you you many times don't know, and 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 the discipline also to kind of have. A, processes and governance and rules of what kind of a tools you want because then somebody wants this kind of an and 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 an tool to make notes and, and suddenly if you have 100 person in organization you might have i mean three four different notes tools and, and 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 your kind of internal stuff is scattered in so many places that that you don't know so so i myself uh, hate the word processes but in cybersecurity, that's the i mean you have to have processes discipline and education and and that's uh, that's how it goes and then kind of a, a things which which I, I have here is 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 the disable all mail forward and for eyes on paying in invoices because that has been kind of the biggest uh, threats uh, uh, in the private equity VC world and in the startups, uh, even in our portfolio, a couple of incidents where very professionally people get into your mail server, they put on an, an, an forward uh, 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 script on, on, on the CEO, CFO, etc. Then they monitor how people talk, how you kind of send invoices internally. And, and, and many times you need to uh, kind of put to somebody that, hey, pay this bill uh, quickly. And they can very well uh, uh, copy the style you do. And, and it's very professionally done. And, 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 and suddenly uh, you pay 5,000, 50,000 to totally wrong uh, account. Everything looks nice, except the account number is, is wrong. So that's why also don't allow uh, mail forward because that's an uh, easy busy and and then always have four eyes on on paying bills be, because then then kind of a human error will not happen if you have four eyes on it but that's what's in in short uh, from my point of view i, I would have uh, 
lots of war stories and 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 and, and interesting things to 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 tell you. Maybe maybe still on the on the enterprise sales, I, I think uh, came up on the two other speakers that that is something where where we also uh, educate a, a lot because I think many many startups are a little bit not understanding that when you are if your focus is B2B and enterprise software, you, you will run into huge amount of scrutiny, uh, compliance, stuff like that, especially if you go to this very kind of an, an, an uh, big uh, 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 regulated industries like bank, uh, drug, medical, uh, 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 all finances, uh, insurance. I mean, if you if you don't have everything in place, because now, uh, for example, in one company we sold to one of the biggest uh, uh, biggest uh, 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 corporate finance houses in the world, and uh, I mean, it was I think it was fifty pages to answer. And what these guys also do, the big enterprises nowadays, they they uh, they get very skillful people to their security team. They usually come from the U.S. government. So so on the other side sits an NSA, FBI, or a CIA employee, and you can imagine because they have been on the both sides of the t -t table. So 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 they they know a lot of stuff. So so you will have very very hard if you if you really want to sell to these kind of instances. So so you have to have you have to have everything in place, otherwise you, you have no chance of selling to enterprise. So, so always take that from the start. Uh, I mean, if your focus is enterprise, you really have to focus on the security and get the fixes in the boxes. But that's in, in, in short, uh, my part. Great. Thank you a lot, Timo, and, and good insights on what is the investor point of view to cybersecurity and the security of the portfolio companies? Um, there was uh, one question. So what would you think is the typical red flags in a startup when you're considering uh, investing in them? Is it, do you think, is it more related to their product or, or then more to the internal side of the company? Uh, that's a good question. I, I, I would say in, in many things, it's it, it, because the, the due diligence, I mean, we look on so many things, but I think it's very much the attitude also. I mean, if it's in, in cybersecurity, uh, I, I, I mean, uh, I think that has changed a lot. I, I think people are getting more aware and smarter on that thing because I mean, even five, six years ago, it used to be, hey, come on, we are a tech company. Of course, we, we know this stuff. But uh, uh, it, is, it is one part of, of the technical things. And, 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 and you are five to 10 PP people. It's, 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 I mean, if you aren't a security company, for sure, you won't master it. And, and, and it, it, it's much better to, I mean, as I said, in the due diligence to, it's never wrong to, to put there that we haven't done this yet or it's in the process. But if you answer kind of everything tick in the box, yes, we have it perfect, we have it perfect when you're 10 person, uh, of course, that, that, uh, that arises 100 more questions. So, so uh, I, I, I think it's, it's in, 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 in cybersecurity, it's, it's very good to be ambitious but also be humble i mean i mean it, it you learn through the through the through the the journey with the investor or whoever your customer so so and and and, and why i see that the, the cyber security is, is a very interesting and challenging because i i draw always parallel to the sports and in in this instance it's the doping the cheaters are always before the testers, and 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 in cybersecurity, it's exactly the, the same. I mean, I mean, it, it is always the cheaters are always one step ahead of the 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 testers. 
Thank you a lot for your answer. And I think this applies to what uh, uh, was said earlier that faking doesn't do it. So you have to really trust on your product and trust that your company is secure in order to be uh, a promising uh, investment to, to potential investors and then also towards the customers. But thank you a lot, Timo. And, and thank you for the participants as well. Uh, we have reached the, the end of the webinar. So on behalf of Maria01 and Accenture Authors and Inventure, I'd like to thank uh, for attending and we will send you the recording of the, this webinar later on and as some feedback as well. But thank you a lot for, for this session and enjoy your Thursday. Thank you. Bye-bye.